I am a member of the Indiana Pennsylvania Woodturners. At a recent meeting, a fellow by the name of George Walker demonstrated how to add a ring of paper to a vase. The look he achieved was very unique. He said he got the idea from an article in the American Woodturner magazine, April 2011 issue, put out by the American Association of Woodturners. The article was by a gentleman by the name of Ray Ferguson. I will give you a general idea of how the vase like this is put together in a little bit. I would add pictures from the magazine, but it's copyrighted material and I don't think I'm allowed to do that. George and I discussed what would have to be done in order to use this idea in a bowl. The following is what I have come up with. George will most likely come up with something very similar and there's a good chance that his idea will be better than what I'm about to show you. These rings, the red, white, and blue ring, is actually craft paper made for little children. So, uh, next I'll show you how I went about putting a bowl like this together. How well, one of these vases is constructed is you take a solid piece of wood Okay, this is going to be the base. You drill a hole down in here. You need a piece of pipe. The diameter of this hole is the same as the piece of pipe. Then you take the paper and drill a hole in the middle, the same diameter as the pipe. And this is the layer of paper. The pipe goes straight through the paper. And the top piece has a hole drilled in it. Of course, you leave yourself a little room to bottom out. Leave yourself a little room here to bottom out. Then you use epoxy glue and you glue this piece of pipe in here and in here and you squeeze it until the epoxy dries. And then you turn it just like you do everything else. But now to make a bowl, I can't have a piece of pipe running down through it. So that's why I'm going to try this method and we'll see uh, what George comes up with. This is the paper we're going to use. Uh, it's craft paper for kids. And it's got red, black, pink, purple, dark blue, light blue, green, white, yellow, and orange. 20 sheets of each. So I think in this particular project we're going to use the red, the white, and the dark blue. Make it a little patriotic. Um, so, uh, and of course this is just a hair under 9 inches by 12, so that's going to limit the uh, size of the bowl. So we're going to go with a bowl 8.5 inches, 8 and 3 quarter, something like that. So we're going to make up the uh, feature ring first, make sure this works. If it doesn't work, then we didn't waste our time making the rest of the bowl. So we'll get started with that. I'll calculate what it takes to make a eight and a half or eight and three quarter inch ring and we'll take it from there. Now I've taken the red, the white, and the blue paper and I drew a circle on it eight and a quarter inches, I think it's eight and a quarter actually eight and a half, eight and a half inches now what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a two wooden um, disc to go on either side and I'm going to drill a hole in the middle. I never drilled a hole in paper but I'm going to try and drill a uh, hole in the middle so that I can bolt the two pieces of wood on either side to keep it solid while I put it in between the other two pieces. And of course my helper's here. He's always a big help. So I'm going to do that and then I'll show it to you. I'm going to start the shop back and I'm going to try to cut this circle on the bandsaw. I don't know if this paper is going to want to move. I don't know how it's going to react because I've never cut paper on the bandsaw before. But we're going to give it a try. Here it goes.
I should have taken this jig off because the problem I had was as the paper went through some of it wanted to go down in here but I got it fairly round so now we'll mark it and drill a hole in the center. I cut these two semi round pieces of uh, open ear plywood semi round because I just cut them out on a bandsaw I didn't turn them on the laser or nothing then I drilled a 3 8 inch hole in the middle with a forester bit. Now what we'll do is we'll take these two, center them on the paper, clamp it down somehow, and drill a hole through the paper in the center, and then put a bolt through the wood, through the paper, up to the top, and tighten it down so we can hold it all together while we work on it. So next thing we'll do is drill a hole in the paper. Now I have a platform clamp fast to the drill press and I have I drilled took these the disc that I turned and I drilled a 3 8 inch hole in the center then I lined it up which you probably can't see with the cross marks where I drew the circle on the paper and then I put these two boards on here and screwed them fast to the table so that this doesn't move while I try to drill paper so I'm going to drill it and we'll see what happens this is a 3 8 inch Forstner bit. Let's see what happens. through. Now I'll put a bolt down through there with a piece of plywood on the other side. This is one of the test pieces from the last bowl. And this is the pieces for this. This is like working with logs instead of these little tiny pieces. So we'll put this first ring together and see how we did. Okay I made the first ring and we're off. The sled's off. Of course I haven't used that 12 piece sled probably well over a year and I have made adjustments to the table saw several times since then because that saw I'm always adjusting it. So by the time we get uh, the rest of these this is off about uh, 30 thousandths from inside to outside. So. Um, I'll adjust the sled as we move on down and another ring or so we should have it back on the money. So I'll glue these rings together and we'll sand them off and next thing is to put the paper in between. Since I really have no idea how to proceed I'd like to turn the outside of these rings round. I tried putting it on the coal jaws and I don't like that idea. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to hot melt glue this to this piece of MDF that's mounted on a face plate. And I'll put it in the lathe and turn the outside around. I'm going to glue it on the inside. And then maybe I'll turn the majority of the inside. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hot, glue, hot melt glue that, turn both of these things around, and then we'll see what we're going to do with the paper in between. Okay, I have the outside turned around. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hot melt the out, hot melt glue the outside in a couple spots, and I'm going to turn the inside around. After I have that done, I'll do it to the second piece. Now the center has been turned around, and all the hot melt glue has been removed. So I'll use the one-way center, put that plug in there to hold it while I remove 
the hot melt glue from the outside that way it can't fly and fly off the handle so I'll turn that off and then we'll do the second second piece okay now I have that paper sandwiched between two pieces of plywood the next thing I have to come up with is do I want to try and put trim screws down through here or do I want to drill holes clamp this real tight and then either drill holes and put dowel rods down through there and glue them or drill holes and put trim screws down through so I got to do a couple tests on scrap to see which tends to work the best and then we'll pick it up at that point now I tried drilling a hole and putting a dowel rod, one eighth inch dowel rod down through there. That just doesn't work. It breaks right off. So this is um, pieces I cut off. I drilled a hole down through the center and then I put in a one and five eighth inch number six trim screw. And it seems to hold exceptionally good. So uh, what I've done on here is I have taken and I've marked this is the, the width of a piece a quarter of the way in a quarter of the way in so that these distances here come out about equal 24 of them and uh, oh, I, I recess this I recess that down in there so now what I'm gonna do is I'm take this over to the drill press drill a hole uh, I can't put too much pressure all at one time here or probably what will happen is I'll crack this joint because uh, that's end grain to end grain so I'll drill the hole starts we'll say a quarter of the way around put a screw in just don't draw it real tight then drill more holes and then snug them up all at one time around in a ring so I'm going to do that Okay, I have all those screws in, 24 of them. Now all that's left to do is uh, take this piece out of here. I don't put this in the coal drills or something and turn this excess paper out of here. And now we can start constructing a bowl. So that's what we'll do next. These are the screws that I put in, the trim screws. As you can see, are being recessed they come within uh, about 3 16th of the bottom bottom has no screws sticking through the walnut base has been glued to the waste block that'll dry at least till tomorrow I mounted the ring in the cold jaws and I turned the excess paper off the outside and the inside so now we'll build a bowl to match that feature ring this is the last ring. Um, none of this is really, really good wood. Because if it turns out to be a disaster, I didn't want to waste really good lumber on this until I know if this is going to work. So we're putting the rings together with Bill Cantor's, Cantor's uh, method. And as soon as the half rings dry, we'll make them into whole rings. I have the table saw all adjusted again, so I'm getting perfect rings. So after these rings are put together, we'll pick it up at that point and we'll start stacking the bowl. Base has been glued to the waste block, base has been turned around, and that is the first ring being glued to the base. All the rings have been sanded, so all we have to do now is put it together. The first ring has been turned around, inside and out and cut down to a half an inch thick. Uh, I'm, I'm going to cut each row down to a half inch thick. Three quarters of an inch just makes the bowl look a little too bulky. Second ring has been turned around inside and out. And I've added the third ring, well it's actually the fourth ring counting the base. The fourth ring has been glued to the waste block, or to the base rather. I decided to leave the fifth ring out so we went right to the feature ring. So we'll leave that dry till tomorrow, and tomorrow we'll see what happens when we try to turn it. 
Okay, the bowl's been completely assembled. I sort of forgot just how fast one of these bowls can get put together. It took less than a day to assemble the entire bowl. Now the only part that concerns me is where I put these screws down through there may be a lot of tension on the wood because it's fairly thick right now but as I trim it down and make it thinner it's very possible that will cause the wood to split. I'm not sure. But because it's not glued down here, remember there's no glue between the paper and this so it's free to split if it wants to. So we'll turn it and we'll see what happens. The bowl's been rough turned. I've made the top walnut ring so the next thing we'll glue the top ring on and then when we get the bowl close to being finished this base goes way down. So we'll take care of that after the top's been put on. Since I was concerned <clears throat> that the screws going down through here are putting a lot of tension on this ring, I decided to go ahead and put this uh, thick walnut ring on the top. I took very exacting measurements as to how far I can go in from the outside and how far I can go come out from the inside uh, so I know where the screws are. Now this ring's real thick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my parting tool and I'm going to cut it in half. Uh, after I'll turn the outside round, the inside round, then I'm going to take the parting tool and I'm going to cut this in half and I'll have another half a ring I can use someplace else. Um, and then we'll finish turning this bowl. We'll finish the outside and the inside. Um, and then I have to take this base way down. But I like to leave that as big as I can, for as long as I can, to give me all the support that's available. There's a picture of the finished bowl before any finish has been applied. Because I don't know uh, how that paper is going to react to uh, finish. I guess I'll try and put a sanding sealer on it and then polyurethane. So we'll see what happens to it when I add the sanding sealer. There's the first coat of wipe on polyurethane. I was afraid that the blue and the red was going to run into the white when it got wet. But it didn't. So we have several more coats to put on and then we'll turn the base off. Okay, we have four coats of wipe on polyurethane on the bowl. Uh, next thing we'll cut this way down, cut it off with a handsaw, put it in the cold jaws and turn the bottom. So this is the finished bowl. It's been signed. Not a real good lumber idea. I didn't use any real good lumber in it. Um, so I'd like to thank George Walker and Ray Ferguson for a unique idea. Uh, will I make another one? Most likely not, but it was fun to try. So, once again, I thank you for watching.